Hello. Getting started here, getting set up. See if you can hear me. Let me do my sound check. Test speakers. Not on there. Okay. Let's see if this will work now. Uh, Just speaker my. Okay, we'll just go with that. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, we are about to go and broadcast on Facebook. Yesterday I did this and the connection wasn't working, but this is working. I decided to go live, preparing for live stream. It is loading up. We should be live momentarily. We are on, whoops, meeting is now streaming live. Hello, welcome to day two of the 30 day Realtor Reflect, <laughs> Realtor Refresh Masterclass. I am looking at my video on Facebook and it is not moving. So I wonder why, did I pause it? Did I pause it? Hmm, it's moving very slowly. You see if I move, does that change anything? Test, test, testing. Okay, let me hit this pause button one more time and make, okay. Hello, Realtor Refresh. This is Kathy coming to you on day two of the 30 day Realtor Refresh Challenge. I'm just gonna get myself lined up and see if I need to let anyone in the room before we get started. Okay, so today, day two, what I'd like to share with you, I did hear the uh, live by a gentleman from Georgia who moved, well, actually from California that moved to Georgia. Um, I was very excited to see that, uh, that live. And what I'm gonna do is see if I can switch my audio to my, because I have a lot of background noise, but it doesn't look like that's gonna happen. As I said yesterday, this is real life, real action. So I wanna take the next 30 minutes to go over two things. One is the idea of ownership and going back through the book of Mark and how that relates to us in the real estate industry. And we'll actually take that back. I'll do that for tomorrow because I wanna give that as a homework assignment. I want you to be able to read that before we get on live tomorrow. So I'll save that for homework. So today I wanna to talk to you about conversations. Conversations that we have with our clients, our prospects, and then the second thing I want to talk to you about is the book of wisdom, which is Proverbs. And today being the 2nd of April, we are going into the second chapter of Proverbs. So let's start with conversations. Conversations. I happen to be in what's called level two in uh, 100x level two. And within level two, there are skill sets. And part of the skill sets which is great. One is sales. Um, the other, it looks like I'm frozen on Facebook. Hopefully that will show up maybe later. Maybe it shows frozen and then it changes later. I'm not sure. I'm just going to slide this over and see if that changes anything. Okay. Looks like I'm live for three minutes, but it's frozen. So hopefully it won't be frozen when it posts. 
getting back to what I was saying, conversations. We get into conversations when we're meeting with clients, when we're meeting with customers, and those conversations can turn into cash. It starts with a contact, so meeting someone or already having a contact in your database, taking those and turning those into conversations. Now, what does the conversation look like? Each of us have, have our own way of talking to people, but one of the key things that I've learned is it's not so much what you say, it's how you say it, and also if you're listening to what is being said by the potential uh, customer or client. Okay, I'm making sure my audio is working because I just got a little alert. Uh, so it's important to not only hear what's spoken, but to hear what's not spoken. So I always say God gave us two ears and one mouth. So listen more, speak less. And when you speak, speak with a purpose. Think about what you're gonna say before you speak. I happen to, um, I can give you an example. I, I have a, a client who referred me another client and that client doesn't speak very good English, but she expresses herself in stories and she speaks very fast. Sorry, my phone keeps ringing. She expresses herself in stories and speaks very fast. Um, but when she told the story to me about her situation, I was able to rephrase what she said and speak it in a way that she felt understood. And I think that's very important as kingdom citizens that we, that we speak from a point of view of life and uh, growth. So again, speaking very uh, purposefully, knowing what you're gonna say before you say it, as well as listening, listening to not only what is said, but what's not spoken, okay? So I'm looking, I'm still seeing my face frozen on Facebook. Um, hoping that this live stream goes through. If it doesn't, then I'll save it and upload it into Facebook. Okay, it's showing green. Okay, all right. Babe, I'm on the video. <laughs> okay, so conversations are so important um, when we want to attract business. I happen okay. to be in a sales challenge right now. And with the sales challenge, we are on this 30-day sprint. So I'm doing this masterclass for 30 days. And during this 30-day process, I'm also in a sales challenge. So I'd like you to join me. So part of the sales challenge is taking whatever skills you have. Most of us who are in this challenge happen, happen to be, most of us in this masterclass happen to be in real estate. So can you think of some conversations you can have with, with people, some of your contacts, or maybe even new contacts, maybe you're prospecting. Prospecting, the art of prospecting, I think is a lost art in real estate. Okay, I'm just gonna let it go. My lights are going off, all kinds of things are happening. But prospecting, prospecting I believe is a lost art in real estate. Part of prospecting is reaching out to people you know or people you don't know. Now the people you know could be part of your database. Babe, I'm on the screen. Can you turn that light on for me if you get a chance? No. On please, yeah. yeah. This one right here. So the art of prospecting has to do with ensuring that you um, reach out to people every day. So part of the sales challenge is to get whatever the Lord is telling you in terms of a number. So I guess we can rewind this a little bit. There needs to be a goal set. So you set a goal on how many, how much cash you want to have at the end of the challenge. Okay, and I'll, I'll give out some awards in this group too. If you want to share your goal, I'll upload a sheet 
so you can play in this uh, sales challenge with me. But part of the goal is to hear from God what your number is, the number that he has for you. Each and, up, each and every one of us has a number that God has for us. Oftentimes we want to create our own number and that's great. You have your own business. You have every right to do that. However, when you partner with the Holy Spirit, you have what I call it superpower. So you can go even further, faster, and have more sustainability when you partner with the Holy Spirit. So the first part of that sales challenge is to set a goal. You set the goal by asking the Holy Spirit through prayer, through uh, whatever, you know, reading the words. I had this one gentleman prophesy over me. And he said that he prophesied 333 because I said I woke up at that time. So he quoted me Jeremiah 33 and well, three and 33, or it's 33 and three and saying it backwards because I don't remember which sequence it's in. But I also ended up asking for a number and I woke up and saw the clock and had that number. And then I prayed and asked the Holy Spirit to give me a number and I have another number. So I'll share that with you a little later. I just want to kind of explain the sales challenge piece. And that brings me back to contacts, conversations, and cash. And so the context that you have, I said that prospect means a lost art. I think it is because we as a society tend to only work with people that we're familiar with or we know or um, what a professional prophetic challenge. Oh, thank you, Miss Deborah. Uh, so part of it is making sure that you're in contact with the people that need what you have, right? That need what you have because it's the art of sowing and, re and reaping. So if you sow uh, a good seed, you're gonna reap good fruit. And so part of prospecting is making sure you reach out to contacts. I set a goal to make 20 contacts a day in the sales challenge. I'm making 20 contacts a day. Part of those contacts could be by text, by email, by phone call, by sending a card out. In fact, Ms. Deborah sending out thank you cards for me. And not only is she sending the cards out to me for me, but she's praying over them as they go out. So whoever thought about that, you know, as part of your business, that's how you partner with the Holy Spirit in your business. That's how you become a kingdom citizen by integrating your business with your spirituality with kingdom. And that was the piece I felt I was missing. I've been in real estate for 28 years and I just had my business in this little section here. And I had my religion slash Christianity slash slash all the things. And then I came into this knowledge and this revelation that it's a kingdom mindset. It's not religion. It's not religiosity. It's basically a kingdom mindset. You know, we are the citizens in the kingdom. And part of that prospecting piece has to do with letting them know what or letting them hear from you what they need to know. Because you don't necessarily know what their needs are until you reach out to them. You don't know that they might be having a hard time. You don't know whatever is happening in, in their particular life. So that's the part that I think is where the, I don't want to say magic, but that's where everything comes to life, where you make those contacts and you make those connections with people that need something that only you can provide. And that's the key, only you can provide. I can't provide your clients what you know they need because I don't know. See, you partner with the Holy Spirit and you find out what those clients need. Okay, so that's part of the contact. So you have prospecting with either your database, hopefully you have a database that would be your current, past customers, clients, and your sphere of influence, people that you know, right? Okay, then you take those contacts and you start conversations. Those conversations should start out by checking in. How are you? How have you been? Those are the sort of 
conversation starters that I would recommend. How are you? How have you been? Find a commonality. Maybe you have children in the same school. Maybe you attend the same church. Maybe you're in the same networking group. Maybe it's someone that you haven't seen in that social group for a while and you just want to reach out. Your first, your first um, motive, because motives matter, and reaching out to that customer or client is to check in, right? People don't know, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So people need to know that you care about them before they're willing to transact with you and send you more business. So that's rich. That's rich. People don't, they don't want you to start selling right away. Now selling is service. However, part of service is doing what the need is. You might find out that they just had a major illness or just had an injury or someone in their life has just passed away and you don't want to go in on your intention, your motives, you want to go in by finding out what the need is. So that's part of the conversation. Again, the conversation starters start out with checking in. How are you? I haven't seen you in a while. Um, those sort of conversation starters. Then listen, listen attentively, listen attentively about what is being spoken and what's not being spoken because you might hear something that takes you in a different direction. I started out talking about the lady who didn't speak very much English. And I wanna go back to that because she expressed to me in stories that I could understand and she didn't necessarily use uh, the English word for it, but she gave me examples so that I could understand. And she also spoke the kingdom language. So I understood what she meant when she said Holy Spirit. I understood when she what she meant when she said Jesus. So those sort of keys help you to understand people and what their needs are. Now, she had a heart desire, or she has because she's still in process. She has a desire to keep her house. However, her husband has a desire to sell the house. So they're at a, a at a breaking point because he wants to divorce and she wants to remain married. So they're totally on the opposite ends of the spectrum. And so I can't go in there just rah, 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 let's sell, or I can't go rah, 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 let's keep the house. I offer options because there's several options that we have as brokers, as realtors in our toolbox that we can share with people that just don't know right? So we talked about the sales challenge. We talked about the contacts that you have that you know, and maybe some that you don't know. You might be farming an area. And we talked about conversations, how to get conversations started. Now let's talk about how you turn those conversations into cash. Now you turn the conversations into cash by making an offer of service right? An offer of service could look like this. I have a real estate firm and I, I specialize in residential and I, I have some commercial. I also have a portfolio of property management services. I can, you know, you provide the service that you have. It also could look like this. Hey, it looks like you might need some coaching. I'm willing to Maybe that's the right word, not willing. That sounds like, I didn't like that word. So back that up. I have a coaching program, which I think would be great, a great fit for you. And I have an opening on this day and this is how much it costs. You know, just give them, give it to them straight. It could look like an offer of service online or in person. So once you offer that service, that converts to cash for you, right? That converts to cash for you. So within this sales challenge, we started out with a goal. We have contacts, conversation that converts to cash. So all during this 30-day masterclass, I'm just gonna check in 
Um, yesterday, I was kind of all over the place <laughs> because I was so excited and my technology was a little messed up. So I'm back on track. Thank you, Jesus. Back on track uh, to provide service to you. And as I said, I don't know if I said this or not at the beginning, but maybe I didn't, but I'll say it now. Iron sharpens iron, but not really because if you get two knives together, they don't really sharpen each other. But if you get a different tool and rub it up against that knife, it'll get sharp, right? A grinding tool would get that knife sharp. And so just like that, we as individuals have our own unique selling proposition. I can't sell like you. You can't sell like me. We are distinctly unique. And the gifts that we have, we get to share with others and we get to attract the business that is for us right? The business that is for us. So there is business that is waiting for you. There is opportunities that are waiting for you. Okay. So I want to make sure I have time for the Proverbs because I want to go into that. But um, before I kind of close that up, I just wanted to see if there are any questions on that looking into the Zoom. So I have both Facebook and Zoom. In case you're joining this for the first time, there is an opportunity to watch this live on Facebook and you can engage in the chat. So much power and gifting. Wow. Thank you, Miss Deborah. Um, so I am doing this every day at three o'clock, 3 p.m. for 30 minutes. And this is the 30-day Realtor Refresh Masterclass. If you know of someone who could be refreshed as a business, as a realtor, maybe they're not even in real estate, but they work around real estate, maybe an investor, maybe a, could even be a client. I have a client that's joined the group um, who's purchased a home for me. So that's fine too. However, however it works, I'm happy to invite other people to the group. So I want to close that piece off with the sales challenge. And I'm pulling up, I'm pulling up the Proverbs chapter two. I, I don't know if anybody has their own special. I know during the wisdom challenge in 100X, they used the trash. Uh, tra the Passion Translation. I'm talking too fast. My tongue's getting in the way. The Passion Translation. So yesterday I used the NIV. Today I will use the Passion Translation because it is more practical ease speaking. And uh, let's find that. So Proverbs chapter two. And it is not too long. So I have about 10 minutes, about nine minutes left. Yes, Karen, iron sharpens iron. You guys are on it, on it, on it, on it. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna go through Proverbs 2 in record speed. And if you have any input on anything that's spoken, share it. And we're relating this to our business because we want wisdom. We, we wanna use the unique proposition skills that God's given us to attract more business, more clients, have more conversations and more cash, cash equivalent to sales because sales is service and we're serving. We're not, selling doesn't have to have a negative connotation. It can have a positive connotation because it is, if you're truly serving, if you're serving people, then there's nothing negative about it. Okay, so I'm gonna switch to the passion translation. If I can find it. I have, oh, daughter keeps calling me. I have the, here it is, the Passion Translation. Here we go. Starting at verse one. Yes, selling is service, Karen. Okay, we'll start with Proverbs chapter two, um, verse one. Top says, searching for wisdom. My child, will you treasure my wisdom? Then and only then will you acquire it. So we need to treasure wisdom. And only if you accept my advice and hide it within you, will you succeed. So we need to hide the word in us to succeed. So train your heart to listen 
talked about that. Listen when you speak and open your spirit wide to expand your discernment. Then pass it on to your sons and daughters. Yes, cry out for comprehension and intercede for insight. Cry out for comprehension. So understand what people are saying when they're talking to you. And also, as I said in the beginning, this is right in line with it. Speak clearly and um, speak with uh, knowledge of what you're going to say before you say it. That's what I wanted to say. Okay, next is on verse three. Yes, cry out for comprehension and intercede or insight. For if you keep seeking it like a man would seek for sterling silver, searching in hidden places for cherished treasure, then you will discover the fear of the Lord and find the true knowledge of God. Wisdom is a gift from a genius God in every word he speaks is full of revelation and becomes a fountain of understanding within you. So the revelations, the wisdom that you're seeking will become a fountain in you. For the Lord has hidden storehouse of wisdom made accessible to his godly ones. He becomes your personal bodyguard as you follow his ways, protecting and guarding you as you choose what is right. Then you will discover all that is just, proper, and fair and be empowered to make the right decisions as you walk into your destiny. When wisdom wins your heart and revelation breaks in, true pleasure enters your soul. What is the soul, right? The soul is the mind, the, the thoughts and the emotions, your soul. If you choose to follow good counsel, divine design will watch over you and understanding will protect you from making poor choices. It will rescue you from evil in disguise and from those who speak duplicates. Duplicis, ooh, that's, that's a, a tongue twister from those who speak duplicities, or they have left the paths of righteousness and walk in, path, in ways of darkness. They take pleasure when evil prospers and thoroughly enjoy a lifestyle of sin, but they're walking on a path to nowhere, wandering away into deeper deception. Wisdom, the way of pure, verse 16 five minutes. Only wisdom can save you from the flattery of the promiscuous woman. She's such a smooth talking seductress. She left her husband and has forgotten her wedding vows. You'll find her house on the road to hell and all the men who go through her doors, wow, will never come back to the place they were. They will find nothing but dissolution and despair Follow those who follow those who follow wisdom and stay on the right path. For all my godly lovers will enjoy life to the fullest and will inherit their destinies. But the treacherous ones who love darkness will lose not only all they could have had, but even their souls. Wow. That is Proverbs 2. I hope that has been an inspiration to you. Some of the nuggets that I took away, I said at the beginning, so it just really magnifies what the Lord is saying to us. We are unique. We are his masterpiece, created each and every one of us for his purpose. So you have a purpose. We all have a purpose. And for tomorrow, I'd like you to read for homework. Well, before that, I'd like you to go live and share your takeaways for today. I'll upload a template for the sales challenge so you can ride with me, go with me on the sales challenge journey that I'm on. And uh, let's see what else. I'd like you to read, I believe it's Matthew 12. No, it's Luke. Uh, Luke. 12. It's about the tenets, the parable of the tenets. It's either in 12 or 20. Let me see 12. If it's in 12, 
Oh, read. Don't worry. Um, famous servant. That's not it. Uh, oh, I'm still in the track. Uh, the passion translation. So it has different uh, topics at the beginning. And maybe it's Luke 20. I think it's Luke 20. I'll post it so I won't waste too much time. I believe it's Luke 20. Uh, scrolling down because I'm determined to find it. I have not found it. So I will post it. But I want you to read that in addition to going live, sharing your biggest takeaway from today. I'm excited to be here with you each and every day. If, you're, if you are not able to come on the live program, I will rebroadcast it. If the Facebook live feed doesn't work, I'll post it uh, from my Zoom link. So I am grateful to be here to share with you. My name is Kathy Cross Reese sharing with you today my journey on the sales challenge, the contents of that, which was contact, conversations, and cash. You are a unique selling proposition. I read to you from Proverbs 2, and go live, share your biggest takeaway. I will post the homework reading for tomorrow, as well as a template for the sales challenge for you to participate. So thank you so much, and I will see you again tomorrow. So thank you again. You can go if you want to go into the actual um, Zoom link. Just go to the event tab up at the top of this Facebook page. You'll see the event tab, and you click on that. It'll show the next uh, Facebook Zoom uh, time, which is at 3 o'clock. It doesn't change. All right. Well, thank you, and I will see you tomorrow.